Now let us look at the ideal and the reality. Let me explain all the above once again, but in more simple terms. In the universe of a symmetry, we have a unity of oppositions. Because of this, certain pioneers in physics, such as Einstein, in his interaction with Wheeler, told him that he was inclined to a more romantic and idealistic reality, suggesting the following, to take on equal footing particles and waves, both from the past and from the future, to look at all symmetry breaking that may take place in this system. One of the results of this symmetry breaking will then be our world. This suggestion seemed to be simple and beautiful, but nobody could find a model fitting these qualities. Until a certain day in 1968, when uh, Dr. Yazanov unexpectedly obtained such a model as a result, strange as it may sound from a mistake in his calculations. The seemingly mistake turned out to be an amazing accurate solution to the problem that prevented the new physics in both directions of time to be birthed. He also understood why this model was working in contrast to the one that physicists such as Einstein and Wheeler were looking for. The solution revealed not only the symmetry of two signs of time in one universe, but also without Ryazanov being conscious of the fact at the time of the mistake, two arrows of time in two different cosmoses. In other words, the model turned out to be one in which time was moving forward in our universe and backward in another universe of which we are not aware. But both of these belong to one another and can only be connected through God the Creator. Amazing! We thus have, have two opposing models of our world which are spiritually connected. So let's look at this model of two opposing worlds. This model of unity of two opposing worlds is far above any human imagination. For example, with regards to the point of observation, it is not clear where the observer is. But this model is in accord with the idea of two signs of time and turns out to work much better than today's model with only one world. Because of this, and because of the great religious meaning of the consequences of this discovery, Ryazanov, who had grown up in a godless Soviet system, considered his mistake rather as a revelation than a logical derivation. Why would the seemingly foolish mistake of the mind be the solution to something as profound as this? It had to be an intervention from the same God who created the universe and had given us the law and the prophets, the New Testament and science, of course. Once this model is applied, we then find an avalanche of solutions for different problems regarding today's physics, a union of different realms of physics, calculation of physical constants and so on. In fact, through this new model of the universe, Ryazanov could theoretically derive the other laws of physics without experiment. And this is how it should be. We do not uphold the spirit world. The spirit world upholds us. Matter came from spirit and not the other way around. It is important that the derivation and accuracy of these laws are not based on experiment, but rather on a non-material wisdom and essence by which the true universe is held together. Einstein too had already advanced in the world of physics to such a level of mental discernment and creative probing that he did not need any experiments to validate his findings, even though experiments did so. Normal scientific experiments deal only with our mundane universe, moving in one direction of time. It thus is incapable of deriving full scientific reality. 
We have here many new effects, but actually also the promise of an apparatus that can enable man to move outside the power of matter. 